What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So I'm gonna check out a thousand IQ WWE moments. There are some moments where you know things happen where the wrestlers actually use their brain to solve certain situations. Where you know, as a, a person that's watching at home, you'd be like, well, "Why you didn't just do that from the jump?" But sometimes the wrestlers actually use their brains, and then they do what they need to do to win the match. Or whatever uh, situation they're in so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support man link to the original video will be down below video is brought to us by uh tap out corner let's get right into this one should be a good one styles and randy orton are two of the best in the game and they proved it when they fought for the first time on smackdown in march 2017 after a long battle aj was sitting up for the phenomenal forearm however styles knew orton would counter with an rko and instead faked randy out yep. as well as the fans the viper had the last laugh though as the phenomenal one then attempted a 450 splash only for orton to dodge the move and catch aj with an rko Whoop. styles has tried pulling this trick several times since then but randy Randy Orton has almost always managed to come out on mm -hmm. top. Now this next one was such a big brain move that it allowed someone to win a championship. In late 2016, Sheamus and Cesaro took on the New Day, who had just become the longest reigning tag team champions in WWE history. The Swiss Superman and the Celtic Warrior were gonna need to think outside the box to defeat the champions, and they did. At one point, Sheamus and Kofi Kingston were the legal men. Sheamus went to take in Cesaro, but pulled his hand away at the last second. This caused Kofi to mistakenly believe mm -hmm. Cesaro was the legal man allowing Sheamus to roll up Kingston and win the match and the Tag Team Championship. John Cena and Randy Orton have fought Very over smart. 20 one on one matches against each other. Because of this, the Wait. two have gotten creative with how to get how the many? of this. The two have fought against each other. Fought in over 20 one on one matches against each other. That's ridiculous. Each other. Because of this, the two have gotten creative with how to get the better of each other, especially Randy Orton. One uh -huh. of Cena and Orton's matches was a 60 minute Iron Man match at Breaking Rights 2009. The goal of an Iron Man match is to get as many pinfalls and submissions as you can in the allotted time. Orton was aware and did something pretty smart. Within the first four minutes of the match, John Cena locked Randy in yep. the STF. And he Orton tapped. tapped out instantly. While Cena did gain a point, the submission didn't do any damage to the Viper and allowed him to stay fresh for the which is smart and there's no point in you putting yourself through the pain when you can just tap out i got a multiple i got an hour to come back and win this remaining 56 minutes now orton did ultimately lose but he put up a good fight in 1998 chavo was feeding his oh, uncle let me see this again. the two eventually lose, but he put up and the timing of that mind you that's that's an, an hour of like really like stretching this match out and the time it right before the clock hit zero that's that's what you call some some good booking like booking it setting up the match a good fight in 1998, Chavo was feuding his uncle, Eddie Guerrero. The two eventually decided to face off in a hair versus hair match. However, Chavo had to compete against Stevie Ray before facing Eddie. Of course, Eddie's plan was for Chavo to get worn out by Stevie, giving Eddie the advantage in his match against Chavo. Chavo knew this and decided to submit before his match with Stevie Ray could get physical. This kept Chavo fresh for his match uh, with his that's smart. immediately after. <laughs> All a smart move, Chavo did end up losing, but he didn't give Eddie the satisfaction of cutting his hair. At the 1998 Royal Rumble, it looked like The Rock's time as Intercontinental Champion was over as he took on the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. Mm. While Shamrock was a tough opponent, Rock had a plan. During the match, Rock's Nation of Domination teammates came out and distracted the referee. Rock then hit Ken Shamrock with a pair of brass knuckles. Bink. Despite <laughs> the hard hit, Shamrock still managed to kick out, but the Great One was prepared. After hitting Ken, The Rock wisely put the brass knucks in Shamrock's trunks. The world's most dangerous man ended up getting the pen, but The Rock told the referee about the weapon. When the official found the brass knuckles in Shamrock's trunks, he believed that Ken Shamrock was the one who used them. The ref ultimately reversed his decision, and The Rock walked away still the Intercontinental Champion. Edge would also oh, be the of his championship nearly 10 years later. During the Raid R Superstars World Heavyweight Championship reign in 2007, he found himself in a triple threat match against Batista and The Undertaker. At one point, the Phenom had the animal locked in a triangle choke. Mm -hmm. Then, the bell suddenly rang, even though Batista yeah. had it tapped. Don't worry, this wasn't the Pittsburgh screw job. Edge had just run the bell to make Undertaker believe that was he won a cool the match look. and release Batista from the hole. That was a, that was a smart moment by Edge. This kept the match alive, Bop. and Edge managed to successfully retain his title with some help from Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Uh -huh. John Cena became infamous for his five moves of doom. He would hit the same exact moves in the exact same order, which would often lead to him getting the win. I guess Cena's opponents never watch his matches because they <laughs> fell for it every time. 
That is, except for this one. On Raw in 2013, Cena fought arguably his greatest rival, CM Punk. Facts. As expected, John Cena eventually went for his signature shoulder tackles, but rather than stand there and take it, Punk was smart and he passed the move, causing John what? Cena to go flying out of the ring. In 2008, Booker T, Christian, and AJ Styles all competed in a triple threat match. Of course, the match type allows someone to lose without being pinned or submitted, and Booker knew this. That's why when Christian went to pin AJ, Booker grabbed the referee by the shirt. This allowed Styles to recover and kick out of Christian's pin. It worked out too, as Booker had his hand raised at the end. That's the how you do it. The of Payback 2013 was a triple threat match between Curtis Axel, Wade Barrett, and the Intercontinental Champion, The Miz. One of these men would pull off 1,000 IQ move in order to win. The Miz locked Barrett in the figure four leg lock, and Wade was on the verge of tapping. Before he could, Curtis Axel covered Wade Barrett, getting him the uh -huh. win before Miz could realize what was going on. The high intelligence move awarded Curtis Axel his first and only singles championship in WWE. What yeah, when they... they they had them align with Paul Heyman. You know, you thought they were, they were going to really do something with it, but it, it didn't really go nowhere outside of that the initial IC uh, title win. One of Shawn Michaels' iconic moves was his kip up. After getting knocked down, the heartbreak kid would suddenly jump back to his feet like nothing happened. Randy Orton would actually use this to his advantage in 2010. The Viper and Shawn were going at it on Raw. As expected, Michaels went for a kip up, but Randy anticipated mm. it and rolled up Shawn to get a smooth, clean win. You know how a wrestler throws their opponent into the ropes, then they drop down to the mat, and their opponent keeps running? Well, someone made the smart decision not to do that. In 2002, William Regal was in a match with Tajiri. Regal threw his opponent into the ropes and dropped down, only for Tajiri to stop and then kick William Regal from behind. <laughs> Why don't more wrestlers do that? At King of the Ring 1998, King got his first ever shot at the WB Championship when he took on Stone Cold Steve Austin. The match was first blood, which already gave King the advantage, yeah. considering his face was covered by a mask. However, the Big Red Machine went even further and wore an attire that covered his entire body. Normally, Kane's ring gear left one arm exposed, uh -huh. but for his first blood match, the Devil's Fear Demon made the Which smart, smart and had that arm covered. This not only made it harder for Kane to bleed, but it also made it harder to tell if he actually got busted open. Yeah. It ended up paying off too, as Kane won and became the WWE Champion. Of course, Eddie Guerrero was the best at figuring out oh, creative yeah. ways to win matches. Whether it was making Lie, him feel like his cheat opponent had steal. Back <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's sport. always funny. Whipping the ref and the ref like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> he was fighting. However, in some rare cases, Eddie's opponent would outsmart. Yep, right. In 2005, Eddie and Booker T faced off in a tournament match with the winner getting shot at the WWE Championship. During the match, Eddie pushed Booker into the referee <laughs> and acted as if he was hurt. However, Booker T used the giant Titantron screen to see exactly what Guerrero was doing behind his back. This allowed the five-time WWE <laughs> champion to get the W and dance in the tournament. Uh, he looked at the screen. Rumble, John Cena did something unusual. Instead of waiting until WrestleMania to use his WWE Championship match, he chose to get his tail shot at the pay-per-view right before WrestleMania, No Way Out. Mm -hmm. The champion was Randy Orton, and the Viper was going to retain his title by any means necessary. After fighting for about 14 minutes, Orton went to the outside. He caught John Cena. Cena with an RKO and had the referee start counting Cena. John avoided getting counted out, which led Orton to initiate Plan B. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's still always gonna be funny to me, man. He just <laughs> the ref was like, "What the fuck? Oh, you disqualified!" I remember that. <laughs> By slapping the taste out of the referee, Randy Orton got himself disqualified. While he lost the match, he still got to keep the WWE title. Over five years later, mm -hmm. Orton pulled another 1,000 IQ move <laughs> over John Cena. In late 2013, the two WWE legends were fighting in a TLC match to become the unified WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Once Cena was incapacitated, Randy handcuffed John Cena to the bottom rope. Even smarter, Randy threw the key into the crowd, making mm -hmm. it impossible for Cena to unlock the cuffs. 
However, Mr. Hustle, Loyalty, and Respect then pulled a 1000 IQ move of his own. Cena unscrewed the bottom turnbuckle, allowing him to prevent Orton from grabbing the championship. Yep. Unfortunately for John Cena, he would still lose after Randy used the ring rope to yank Cena off the ladder. The idea of a last man standing match is to beat up your opponent so badly that they can't get to their feet before the count of 10. However, Chris Jericho decided to work smarter, not harder. At Armageddon 2000, Damn. R2J took on Kane in a last man standing match. The Big Red Machine was significantly bigger than Jericho, but Chris Chris had the bigger brain. While fighting near the entrance stage, Jericho noticed a stack of barrels. Chris decided to knock them over, <laughs> making the masked demon unable to get up before the count of 10, giving Y2J the win. John Cena would do something similar over a decade later. In 2014, Cena found himself in a last man standing match against Bray wow. Wyatt. To end the fight, Cena gave Bray an AA onto a production case. John yeah, then threw the production case, case on over. Top of Wyatt, yeah. making it impossible for him to get up, and therefore making Cena the winner. Did you know that Batista once lost a match due to duct tape? To see it for mm -hmm. yourself, watch the video. Oh, man, bro. Randy Orton just sly and cunning, bro. This <laughs> nigga, John, yeah. Instead of waiting for WrestleMania, I'm going to challenge you at the Royal R Not the Royal Rumble. I'm going to challenge you at the, the pay-per-view before Mania. And then still fucking lost the back. He won, but... That's how the, the rules are, man. You can keep the title by disqualification. <laughs> and Randy was like, well, all right. <laughs> I, I win still, you idiot. You, you, <laughs> you gave up your, your, <laughs> your title shot just like that, you idiot. <laughs> oh, I love Randy Orton, man. Comment down below. Let me know some other big brain IQ moments from wrestlers i i wish we could we'd see more of it because it, it, it kind of it, it makes you feel better on what you're watching and it's not insulting your your intelligence but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all keeping me see you on the next one peace